Welcome back. For this video, we're going to do some calculations on a kite. And for our kite projects, um, we're looking at two forces. We're looking at the lift force, which is going up. And we're looking at uh, the force of gravity, which is going down. So this one is an upward force, this one is a downward force, and we're trying to compare the two um, to ultimately see if the lift force is much greater than the down force, the gra gravitational force, or vice versa. Um, so we have two equations for these. Um, the force of gravity, that one is an easy one. Uh, mass times acceleration of gravity. And the lift force, we had a more complicated equation of this. So let's, let's run through it. So for this question, uh, this question has us finding what is the lift force. So we're only interested in this top equation for this problem. So let's take a look um, at it and let's just start plugging some numbers in. So um, I'm gonna rewrite it down here. Lift force is pi squared theta A, the density V squared over 180. Okay, so I'm gonna write underneath, I'm gonna start plugging numbers in. I like doing this just because it helps me stay organized. So that's pi. Uh, this symbol here is the angle. So we can, we can go up and look at the angle, the angle is 22 degrees. So what we can do right here is put 22. Okay, this A is for area, and the area is a little complicated to find, and because it's a little complicated to find, I'm gonna skip it for now, and I'm just gonna leave it as uh, empty. Uh, this symbol right here is stands for density. It's the Greek symbol rho. And the density of air is a constant. So that constant is equal to 1.25 near sea level, which is where we're at. V squared, V is obviously for... Um, v is obviously for velocity. So we need to find the velocity. So if we look up here, uh, the velocity is 2.4. So down here, I'm gonna put 2.4 squared. And all of this is over 180. So we're all looking pretty good so far. I just need to find that area, that A. So to find A, I need to find the area of my kite. And the kite, is made up of triangles. So that's gonna make our area easy to find. We just gotta find the area of some triangles. So let's, let's read through it and let's see what it says. It says, the length of the crossbar between points J and L is 31.4 centimeters. I'm reading that right there. So that means the distance between here and here is 31.4. The next sentence says, the length of the spine between K and the crossbar is 19.7. So that is this, between K and the crossbar is 19.7. And then finally it says, the length of the spine between points M and the crossbar is 20.3. So that's this distance is 20.3. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make two triangles. I'm going to start by doing the area of the top triangle, this guy. And then I'm going to do the area of the bottom triangle, which is this guy. And I'm going to add the two triangles together. So for the top triangle, um, let's do area top. Area of a triangle is one half base times height. And if we look at our triangle, 
our triangle has a base of 31.4 and it has a height of 19.7. So 31.4 and 19.7. So I'm looking at the base and I'm looking at the height. So I'm looking at this top triangle here. Okay. So to solve this, uh, I'm going to put it in my calculator. Actually, before I do that, i got to put it in the equation. So I have 1 half base times height. And then when I put that in the calculator, I get an area of 309.29. These are square centimeters for area. Okay, now I'm going to find the area of the bottom. That is also equal to 1 half base times height. This time we have the bottom triangle. The base is the same. So if you look here, our base is 31.4. We have the same base. But now our height is going down. It is 20.3. So this distance here is 20.3. So our area of the bottom is 1 half, 31.4 times 20.3. So the area of the bottom is... 318.71. So my total area, the area of my triangle, is going to be equal to both of those. i got to combine them. And when I do that, the area of my triangle is... 309.29 plus 318.71. I get 628 exactly. That's kind of crazy. 628 exactly. Okay. Um, this is great and all, but I don't want square centimeters. I want to convert this to meters. Uh, square meters. So to convert square centimeters to square meters... Um, we have to move, it, move the decimal point over. If we're converting centimeters to meters, we move it over two times. However, if we're moving over square centimeters to square meters, we have to move it over four times. So for us, we're going to move the decimal point over four times. So we have one, two, three, four. So our answer would be 0 0.0628 square meters. This is the value that we are going to plug in all the way up here. That is our area. 0 0.0628. And now, for the final solution, uh, I'm going to plug this in the calculator. So in my calculator... In one line, I'm going to put 3.14 squared times 22 times 0 0.0628 times 1.25 times 2.4 squared divided by 180 all in one line. And I get a value of 0 0.54 newtons. And that is my answer. So it's a lot of steps, but just look at the equation, plug the numbers into the equation. The hard part, I think, is finding the area, and you have to find the area of both triangles. Um, I did show a way to find um, the area. If you didn't want to use the top and the bottom, uh, you could totally use the left and the right. So you could use that side and then um, use the other side. Uh, that might be easier. Um, you have choices. You could also totally, um, if you wanted to be really safe and cautious, um, you could find the area of all four triangles. 
So you could find the area of that side, and then that side, and then there, and then there, and do all four triangles. It's up to you. Hopefully you got it, and um, I'll see you next time.